Aaron, Roll Tide. It was pretty fun here on Saturday in Tuscaloosa. It was a special atmosphere. You, you start thinking about the last two games in Bryant-Denny Stadium, and the fans really brought it. Coach Saban has, has basically thanked the fans for having an impact on the game. Look, and I, and I think the way this team is this year, relatively not as strong as they've been in years past, and sort of an uneasiness, uncertainty about this team going from week to week in big games, I think it's made the fans – connect with this team in a way that they haven't in a while that there is genuine excitement when they win whereas you know during the height of the dynasty they expected to win and so there wasn't any uncertainty well now there's uncertainty so you win you get that sort of euphoria and we're seeing that in Brighton new stadium what makes this team so good at adjusting whether it's trailing at halftime maybe not playing their best from one quarter to the next how are they getting back on track especially in some second halves yeah especially on defense yeah. right you start thinking about uh, only seven points allowed versus that explosive lsu zero versus Tennessee, which is also an explosive offense. So I think it's just the defensive staff, all the defensive coaches. Coach Saban actually said during his Monday press conference that they're actually instructing from drive to drive on the sideline too. So I think the coaching staff deserves a lion's share of what you're seeing in the second half and the players. It's just, I think, particularly at home, they're feeding off that crowd's energy and, and they've been lights out. Offensively, how is this team different now as we're nine weeks in compared to where we were early in the year? Night and day. I mean, every week they get more multiple. Uh, we're seeing more jet sweeps. We've seen Ken the emergence of Kendrick Law the last few weeks. Uh, now Jalen Milrow, four rushing touchdowns. You're going to have to start accounting for him and, and dedicating a quarterback spy to him. And I, and I think a lot of that, the growth of, of Jalen as a quarterback. Look, he's, you know, I think a lot of people forget he's – that was only one start coming into this year, and that was an injury uh, necessitated start against Texas A&M the year before. So he's getting more experience every week. I think the coaching staff trusts him a little bit every more. So more of the game plan is being installed every week. Um, and the in the emergence of the offensive line, look, Jaden Roberts being inserted into the starting lineup at right tackle is noticeable. That is a big, angry man who is physical. Now you got Tyler Booker, you got uh, J.C. Latham, the continued growth and emergence of Caden Proctor left tackle. The offensive line's allowing him to do it. Not perfect, but you're seeing steps every week in the uh, sort of the evolution of this offense. Absolutely, and then it continues with the wide receivers as well, whether it's Jermaine Burton, Isaiah Bond. They had a lot of targets against yeah. Tennessee. They're stepping up and making plays. I mean, Isaiah Bond is a huge weapon. We've seen Jermaine Burton in that game against Texas A&M. He's, uh, he's a weapon, too, so you've got two reliables there. And um, I mentioned Kendrick Law. There are different ways that you can use him. A lot of people are saying he's Debo Samuel 2.0. We're not going to cl claim he's going to be a star in the NFL, but in terms of body type and the explosiveness that he brings. And, look, I don't think they've scratched the surface on a player like Amari Nyblack at tight end on how they can use him. So Alabama suddenly, you know, a lot of question marks about this offense throughout the year, but – each week they've unquestionably gotten better and suddenly they got you start looking around and, and an offense that that looked pretty lame throughout much of the season it's like oh they got some weapons out there now how about the running back room as well uh, we saw jam miller most of the yeah. second quarter didn't see roy dell at all in the first half he comes into the third quarter and you can't stop him i mean jam miller is one of those plug and play guys that gives you juice immediately he's just got that extra gear to him jace mcclellan's has been a rock all year long and roy dell is really came into his own this season so it's exciting and you got a young guy like justice Haynes when it finally clicks for him beyond just carrying the ball i think a lot of people forget running backs have other things they have to do you gotta you gotta know the pass protection you gotta be able to pick up a blitz all those th sorts of things that maybe high-ranked players weren't asked to do in high school so it's a it's a loaded running back room but now with jam miller i mean you just notice you don't even have to see the number you're like oh that looked different and, and that's jam miller Absolutely. So good to see that for the Crimson Tide against LSU. Crazy home environment. Now you got to snap back to reality a little bit. Yep. Going on the road, early start at Kentucky. Just what's the focus going to be around here this week? Yeah, what do they call it? A trap game? Yeah. Uh, when you had two emotional wins with Tennessee's emotional win, you had the bye week to sort of reset, and then LSU is another emotional win. And then it's a sleepy 11 o'clock kick in Kentucky. Um, the name's not going to make you get up for it. So you got you got to motivate yourself. And if if playing for an SEC West title doesn't get them up, then then nothing will. So I think this is a maturity week for this Alabama football team because it's Kentucky and, and, and Mark Stoops, that's a quality football team. You know, they, they're they really good in, on the line of scrimmage. So Alabama's going to – it's not LSU's defense, no offense to LSU, but I think it's well documented the struggles they've had this year. So Alabama's got to come ready to play on an 11 o'clock kick with everything at stake to be able to win the West. I mean, look – you start thinking about the second or third week in September, the conversations that people were having about Alabama, it is drastically different now. And this team 
hate to use that word, can, you know, that phrase, control your own destiny, but they're in a really good spot as long as they take care of business. But it's a big maturity test this weekend. Well, you're working for Corsier, Alabama. What can you tell us about some of the work you guys are doing kind of throughout the season, not just with the football program, but touching all sports here at Alabama? Yeah, so obviously a big basketball game in Coleman Coliseum tonight. We'll be there for that. We had a big tailgate out on the quad. For LSU, we're, we're sort of a half-hour huddle is our premier show. We're showcasing our student-athletes and their personalities across all sports. And um, I, th I think it's just in, important and incumbent upon us to just keep stressing how NIL is important to the future of all programs at the University of Alabama. For $18 a month, you can help uh, do your sort of uh, – fulfill your own joy because I, I saw a lot of joy in the stadium on Saturday night, Roger. And if Alabama wants to continue that joy, then NIL is the way that you can directly support that. Absolutely. Well, Aaron Settles, thank you so much for joining us for all time. Absolutely.